Hello boys, in this video I'm going to explain the recording of the transactions of task 6.16 into the relevant journals. Okay, so you could skip all of the opening balances. Please remember that these opening balances for debtors and creditors are important because sometimes the transactions refer back to the amount owed on the 1st of April or basically at the end of March. And then I hope you've noticed that cashier stores makes use of black horse as their cost code with b equals one and then they say cost codes are given in brackets so in other words you didn't have to do any cost of sales calculations for this exercise but with every sale they gave you a code for the cost price and how it works is that the word black horse is your code so every letter represents a number starting with one and going all the way up till zero okay and then if they say that the cost price for example is b e e you just follow the code so you will say b is a one and e is a zero so b e e equals a cost price of a hundred rand for example okay so every single time when i have a cost of sales value this is how i got to that value Okay, so let's go and look at your transactions. The first transaction on the first said that K Kashir, who is our owner, increased his capital contribution by 20,000 Rand and receipt K101 was given to him. If we record this in the CRJ, it will be a simple capital transaction. Remember, if the document says K101, then you use that K. And also remember that capital never goes to analysis of receipts. The next transaction said on the third we sold goods on credit so you immediately have to know that the words on credit indicate it's DJ to the following a Stephen invoice K1001 N Noel and R Rogers and for every single transaction they gave you a cost code and you had to use that black horse barcode principle all of these will go to the dj and they will look like this the first one was to a stephen please remember to write the debtor's number okay and the reason why i made this green is because it just indicates that i've used this cost code system to determine the cost of sales price the next one was to nol and the next one was to r rogers all of them on the third then on the fourth, we bought the following from Ace Wholesalers and paid by check. So these words indicate that this is a CPJ transaction. The check number was number 2001, merchandise and stationery. So in the CPJ, it will look like this. The check is 2001. It's to Ace Wholesalers. Ace Wholesalers is not a creditor, so leave this folio column blank. The total value of the check goes to bank and then the separate values goes to trading stock and stationery. Okay, so remember to get this bank value, you say 3,800 plus 250 equals 4,050. Then on the sixth, cash sales as per CRT 101 for 2,700 Rand and then they gave you a cost price. Remember cash sales will always go to the CRJ. So this is a normal sales transaction. You don't have to write the CRT number. You always have to say sales if it's a cash sale. And it's the only transaction for the day. So it goes to analysis. Remember to draw that line. Put it in bank. And remember you had to use black holes to get this cost of sales value. Then on the 7th, we cashed a check to pay wages. This is a basic CPJ wages transaction. Just remember that the details for wages must be cash. Then on the 9th, we received a check. So if we received a check, it will go to the CRJ because we received money from a Stephen for 520 Rand in settlement of his account at 1 April. So the first thing you had to do is you had to go and look at how much he owed us on 1 April. Okay, he owed us 560 Rand and he settles 
this full value by only paying 520 Rand. So that implies that we gave S. Stephen 40 Rand discount. In the CRJ, it will look like this. We'll give him a receipt because he paid us with a check. He only paid 520 Rand. That's the value that we'll put in our till, that we will bank, and that we received from him. But we also granted him 40 Rand discount because he's actually settling an account worth 560 Rand. R. Rogers returned goods not according to order. 150 Rand with a cost price of BEE issued credit note number 10. So returned goods and credit note should indicate to you that this is a DAJ transaction. In the DAJ, you will say credit note number 10, R. Rogers is D4. The value, the selling price value was 150 and the cost of sales according to Black Horse is 100. Then on the 11th, we received a credit invoice. In other words, we bought on credit, so it's a CJ transaction from Max Wholesalers for the following merchandise, stationery, and packing materials, but they indicated that we treated as consumable stores. Okay, so remember you have to add all of these together to get the net effect on creditors control. And something else that I want you to remember is that we always renumber credit invoices that we receive from creditors. So I just renumbered this to number one. And this creditors control value is the sum of all of the individual values. Then on the 12th, we issued a check. Okay, so it's CPJ to max wholesalers for 1,100 Rand in part payment of the account and we received 60 Rand discount. But now be careful. The amount that we've written on our check is 1,100 Rand and the discount is 60 Rand. So don't think that you have to go and subtract the 60 from the 1,100. We actually paid 1,100 Rand that's the value that will go to bank and to payments. Please remember to write the creditor's number in this failure column. Then on the 14th, we cashed a check for wages. This is a straightforward wages transaction in the CPJ that will look like this. Remember to write cash. Also on the 14th, we received a check from R. Rogers for 400 Rand in part payment of his account and we allowed him 35 rand discount once again the value of the check is 400 rand so that's the amount that will go to bank and receipts and the discount value is 35 rand this is a crj transaction and we will issue him a receipt because he paid with a check okay so remember these three values must be the same that's the amount we actually received and this is the discount value then on the 15th, we issued a debit note. Now, debit note means that we are returning stuff. Okay, so it's in the CAJ to max wholesalers in respect of 10% trade discount not deducted on the invoice on the 11th. So in other words, this entire invoice on the 11th had to have 10% discount on it. So merchandise need 10% discount, stationery need 10% discount, and consumables need 10% discount in the CAJ. So it will look like this. Debit note number 55. Okay, so the trading stock, if you calculate 10% of 900 is 90, 10% of 250 is 25, 10% of 150 is 15, and if you add these three values together, you get 130. Then on the 16th, cash sales. This is a straightforward CRJ transaction. Please remember to use the cost code to get this cost of sales value. Then on the 17th, we issued three different credit invoices. So all of these will go to the debtors journal. And remember to use that black horse cost code. Okay, so it was first S. Stephen, then N. Noel, then R. Rogers. And you will notice that this is the last debtors journal transaction. So you can quickly just total your columns 
and remember to reference your general ledger accounts. Then on the 18th, we received a debit note from the bank together with S. Stevens' check marked RD, insufficient funds, C, the 9th. Now, if you go back to the 9th, you would see that this is the check that he paid 520 Rand to settle his account of 560 Rand. Okay, so we have to go and cancel the 520 Rand in the CPJ and the 40 Rand discount in the general journal. Remember that the document is bank statement and that you have to say RD and you have to write the debtor's number. Okay, so this is the part that he actually paid us, is cancelled in the CPJ. And then our first general journal transaction is cancelling this discount. Okay, so we will issue journal voucher number one. The account that is debited is a Stevens account because now he owes us the money again. The account that is credited is discount allowed. It's an expense, but we are reversing this expense on the credit side. And you just say cancel discount on an RD check. Then on the 19th, we bought the following on credit from OP Traders as per invoice number, blah, blah, blah. But remember, we will read number, credit invoices, merchandise, equipment, and stationery. In the credit journal, creditors journal, it will look like this. This creditors control value is just the total of all of the individual values. Then on the 20th, we issued a credit note, so this will go to the DAJ, to A. Stephen for 120 Rand. The cost price was RE, and this was in respect of damaged goods returned by him. In the DAJ, it will look like this. You will also notice that this is the last DAJ transaction, so you can total your DAJ and remember to reference your general ledger. Then on the 21st, we cashed a check and paid wages. This will go to the CPJ. Remember the details is cash. Then on the 22nd, we bought merchandise from Dallas Traders for 800 Rand less 10% trade discount. And we issued them a check. So this is a CPJ transaction. But now we get 10% trade discount. So the value of the stock that we are buying is actually 800 multiplied by 90% because we're not going to pay the full 800 Rand. We're going to pay 90% of it, which gives you a value of 720 Rand. Don't write anything here because Dallas Traders is not a creditor. Then on the 23rd, G. Ganson was declared insolvent, write off his account. Now you will remember that G. Ganson owed us 200 Rand when the month started. So we go and write his account off in the general journal. The account that will be debited is an expense account called bad debts. The account that will be credited is debtors control G. Ganson because we're taking him out of the debtors control account on the credit side. And then you just write account written for. On the 24th, we charged a Stephen 20 Rand interest on his overdue account. This is also a general journal transaction. The account that will be debited is a Stephen's account because now he owes us more money. The account that will be credited is an income account called interest on overdue debtors. And you say interest charged on overdue account. Usually, we include the interest rate and the um, time period, but in this case, it wasn't given to us. Then the next transaction, also on the 24th, said issued a check. In other words, it's a CPJ transaction to OP traders for 1,200 Rand in part payment of accounts, and we received 90 Rand discount. So we paid 1,200 and received 90 Rand discount. In the CPJ, it will look like this. Remember to write the creditor's number. Then on the 25th, there was cash sales. 
So this is a normal CRJ transaction that will look like that. Remember to use that black horse cost code to get to your cost of sales value. Also on the 25th, we received a check from a tenant, D Singh for 800 Rand. This will also go to the CRJ. So you would have noticed that I didn't bank the 4,200 Rand for the sales yet because I knew this transaction was coming. And then at the end of the day, you can bank the total value in your till. And then you would notice that it's the last transaction in the CRJ. So you can quickly total your columns and remember to reference your general ledger accounts. Then on the 25th as well, we issued a check. In other words, it's a CPJ transaction to max wholesalers for 300 Rand in part payment of our accounts. No discount on this transaction. It will look like this in the CPJ. You don't have to make that zero in discount received. You can just leave it blank. I just like to make it um, complete because then at the end I could see easily if I've missed something or not. Then on the 27th, we bought the following on credits. In other words, it's a CJ transaction from Max Wholesalers. They give us an invoice number, but we always renumber invoices from creditors and it's merchandise and equipment. So in the CJ, it will look like this. The creditors control value is the sum of these two individual values. And then it's the last CJ transaction, so you can quickly total your columns and remember to reference your general ledger accounts. Then on the 28th, the owner drew a check for his personal use. So if the owner takes money, it's a normal CPJ transaction. It will look like this and it goes to drawings. Also on the 28th, we issued a debit note. So this indicates it's a CAJ transaction to max wholesalers in respect of incorrect merchandise supplied for 125 Rand and an allowance of 50 Rand on the office desk, which was slightly damaged. In the CAJ, it will look like this. So 125 Rand is for the merchandise or the stock and the other 50 Rand was an allowance on the desk, which was equipment. So you need to split it, but then you add the two together to get the 175 and you can total your CAJ and reference your general letter. Then on the 29th, the month, monthly statement received from Max Wholesalers reflected an amount of 30 Rand being interest on overdue account. Max Wholesalers is a creditor so now we are charged interest on an overdue creditor in the general journal. It will look like this. The account debited is that interest on overdue creditor expense account. The account credited is the creditor's control account because now we owe even more money and your narration is interest charged on overdue account. We didn't have a rate or a time period, so that's fine. And then just remember to total your debtors control and creditors control columns. And then right at the end, the last transaction said statement received from the bank reflected the following charges, service fees and cash deposit fees. Both of these form part of bank charges. So in your CPJ, it will look like this. It's a bank statement transaction and the total 60 Rand will go to bank charges. And then you can just total your CPJ columns and reference your general legend.